It's time for Okoboji Broadcast with Jeff B. And Okoboji Broadcast is being brought to you by Bank Midwest, Dream Big, Plan Wisely, Live Well. By Duckies Marine and Motorsports Repair in Spirit Lake. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Brands Law Office in Spirit Lake. By Synergy Chiropractic and Acupuncture in Okoboji. By Bloom and Leonard Agency in Esteville. And HP Insurance Agency with offices in Sibley and Rock Rapids. By Okoboji Mattress Company, one mile west of the junction of Highways 9 and 71 in Spirit Lake. Roof and Locker on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake, Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake, and B Radiant Laser Skin Studio on Highway 71 in Spirit Lake. Welcome to Okoboji Broadcast, everybody. Start of a, well, it's a beautiful day today. I know we're looking at a little rain tomorrow, maybe Sunday. We'll see. The weatherman, sometimes they don't get it right. State Representative John Wills of the 1st Legislative District of Iowa is here with me today. And we're talking, first of all, hi, John. How you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Thanks, thanks for having me today. It's my pleasure. So glad you could, because I, when I saw the legislature was going to reconvene, I thought, oh my goodness, uh, I got to talk to Representative Wills. And since it will reconvene on June 3rd, uh, and I know you've been working hard from home and, and trying to get things done, but is it going to be good to get back down to Des Moines and working with colleagues and, and moving the budget and everything else forward? Yeah, you know, we have, uh, we've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of telephone uh, conference calls. Um, and so we're doing things here, just uh, we don't uh, get a chance to see each other in person. And, and I, I really, you know, me personally, think that that personal contact is uh, just such a great um, additive portion of what we do as legislators. Um so it's going to be really good to get down to Des Moines and, and experience that uh, in person again versus uh, just, uh, you know, like we're doing right now through Zoom and, and trying to recreate um, that impersonal uh, side of things. Um, it, it'll be good to be able to at least uh, be six feet away from somebody instead of, uh, you know, across the miles through the airwaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, I think back to... Uh, the legislative forums we had before uh, things got stopped in March, and and uh, I, I know you had a lot of personal goals for this particular session. So what's it going to look like when you get down to Des Moines? Of course, the fiscal year uh, begins for the state on July 1st. You get going on June 3rd. Are, are there a lot of your goals and aspirations kind of set back well we'll get to that in the 21 session or uh, and as far as getting everybody together are they taking precautions in the state capitol yeah um a lot of good good questions there as far as you know what what's still left to do you know we, we are constitutionally bound uh, to do a state budget and so we will get that that's going to be our main focus there are still a few things out there that need to get done a few priority items that need to be done and so we're going to work on those when we go down on uh, june 3rd uh, that's the day after the primary is uh, over um, we will uh, um, you know back in march when we left we left on the second funnel week yeah. and so we will have the final portion of that funnel week starting june 3rd june 4th and june 5th june 5th will be the funnel uh, the end of the funnel week uh, we'll come home after that we'll have committee meetings and public input and uh, people uh, will be able to watch. Uh, all committee meetings will be uh, done in the uh, house on the house floor. Okay. Uh, people will be able to have input through email, and uh, they'll be able to see the, the proceedings on the house floor cameras. Um, people can send in notes. People can uh, do all kinds of things as far as public input, and that was one of the things that was very important for us was to have public input and and to be transparent. And so we'll finish up that um, that uh, funnel week and then come back on the 8th of June and we'll stay there until we're done. I, I predict that, you know, we'll be done Friday or Saturday. Uh, okay. So we'll be very short after that. Okay. Uh, Des Moines is still, uh, get, they've got a lot of cases of, uh, of the COVID virus. And so we don't want to needlessly be spreading or, or, or putting anybody into harm's way. Uh, but we definitely need to have a budget um to, con to conclude this year uh, so that on July 1st uh, all of our departments and so forth have something to go to and something to budget off of. 
right? It, are they asking, or are they going to be doing any testing on the legislators and senators uh, uh, and so forth uh, as you get down there, or are they asking you to do that prior, or, or yeah. what are they doing? So all visitors to the state capitol will go through a health screening. Uh, legislators are unique because um, uh, it's a constitutional issue. Even if a legislator has is tested positive for COVID-19 um, and they say, I'm going to go vote, we have to allow them to go vote because the Constitution says uh, legislators are um, – I'm trying to think of the right word. Legislator, basically, legislators are required to vote if they're able to. Right. And so, um, constitutionally, we can't prohibit somebody, a legislator, um, from being there. Uh, nor, nor do we want to. I mean, that would that would discriminate or, or you know invalidate one right. percent of the state's population. Yeah. Uh, by doing that. And so that's kind of uh, what we intend to do. All visitors will be screened. Uh, every time they come into the Capitol, they'll have a temperature and, and health questionnaire taken. Legislators can voluntarily do that. Um, face masks and, and face shields will be uh, voluntary on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Um, but we're setting things up so that we will have space. Uh, we will have, uh, you know, the, the, the areas around the Capitol will be cordoned off for certain groups of people. So, uh, you know, people who want to speak on a specific item or, or want to be there can definitely go, uh, but uh, th- they will have to, you know, be in certain locations of the building at certain times. And, yeah. Uh, so it's for the best for all people in the state of Iowa, not just legislators or anything like that. Yeah, like like uh, everything else, John, it, it's going to look a little different than uh, what we were doing three months ago. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting down there again, like I said, and, um, you know, just uh, things are changing, uh, changing back to the way, hopefully the way that they were. Um, as of today, I, I think uh, next week I have a haircut scheduled. And so <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're starting to open up and become normal again. Yes, indeed. Well, and that kind of leads me to you recently had a, a Facebook post that I took note of uh, and uh, said that Iowa was in the top 10 in the nation uh, for transparency. What, what exactly does that mean, John? You know, so often I get emails and they're saying, you know, quit, quit, uh, telling people, you know, mistruths and, you know, quit misleading people. Iowa's the hotbed of COVID-19 and, and all that stuff. And so uh, I think yesterday Iowa was notified that we are in the top 10 of the states as far as transparency uh, for our reporting systems and, and the COVID, uh, especially the COVID tracker, the, the website that we have. Um, so, uh, everything that we have is available online, and, and so Iowa, um, you know, has been touted by the president and by the vice president as being, um, you know, doing the right things and being leaders in the nation as far as how to treat COVID nineteen and and how to how to deal with it. So I have really great confidence in the governor and what she's been doing, and understand that uh, yeah, sure, we're going to have areas or, or portions of our state. Uh, crop up that have, you know, maybe flares of, of the disease. Uh, but, you know, a newsletter that I wrote yesterday, I think uh, really sums it up and yeah, something that I, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, for, for several months, we've been told that all of these measures are to flatten the curve. All of these measures are to make sure that our hospitals aren't overwhelmed and that sort of thing. And we've done exactly that. We have flattened the curve. Uh, and I think that was achievable. That was an achievable goal. Yeah. Um, the goal that so many people want or that are they're, they're really pushing for right now is that nobody will ever get the disease. And I think that that's not an achievable goal. And so we really need to kind of keep that in the back of our minds as we go through daily uh, life is that we can never... Uh, stop people from getting COVID-19. What we've done is flatten the curve so that our hospitals aren't overwhelmed. Yeah. Our uh, facilities aren't overwhelmed. Uh, you know, 
if you don't believe me, take into account the influenza. Uh, we know every year that there's going to be a bout of influenza coming around, and yet 30,000 to 50,000 people, 80,000 people die of that each year. Right. Uh, is something that we cannot, we just can't achieve that goal of stopping everybody from getting sick. Um, so, but what we can do is flatten the curve like we've done. We can practice good hygiene, washing our hands, and uh, just being smart about how we do things as we begin to open up and become uh, an active society again uh, and being able to interact with people and be out and about. Yes. And, you know, and I can't recall, John, uh, where we were on, you know, before all this started, you know, it's getting back to the legislative part of it and that uh, uh, where we were on like, uh, you know, on the budget for education, which is a lion's share of uh, the, the budget for the legislature. And uh, this is going to have to come together fairly quickly. And then, of course, uh, the governor is going to have to uh, sign or veto things as they come. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be so condensed and uh, it, it's got to be kind of uh, on the side of wow this is a lot of work in a short amount of time yeah yeah you're exactly right um, you know we're really going to have to look at the budget because we we had looked at maybe having about a 500 million dollar uh, budget overage <laughs> yeah. meaning uh, taxpayers had overpaid um, but uh, I think that we're going to be looking at a shortfall and so where does that leave us as far as uh, we already approved and the governor has signed a 2.3% increase to K-12 through education? Um, you know, hopefully we can save that and keep that uh, untouched. But the rest of our state budget is going to be tight, and we're going to have to really look at um, what we were going to do. Uh, we were looking at a huge increase to mental health, for example. I believe we need to have some increase to mental health because this whole isolation and uh, whole thing is – really kind of reduced um, people's ability to cope. Um, but uh, we need to have those resources available, but can we, we just won't have as much money to deal with that yeah. uh, sort of issue as we had thought. You know, and that's one side of the, uh, you know, the quote unquote, uh, 100 day session, you know, you'll be doing some guesswork to the best of your ability, getting this budget put together, but then you'll have until January uh, 2021 to really assess okay what has really come in where are we really sitting uh, are, are we still getting shortfalls are we doing better than we anticipated so you'll have that time in between to really get a, a feel for where we are in the state of Iowa exactly yeah um, and you know in a couple of years that I've been in the legislature by the time we got to January the revenues didn't come in as anticipated and so we had to make some cuts I'm hoping that we can avoid that. Um, we did ask, uh, recently, we did ask for the Revenue Estimating Committee to come back in and uh, take a look at their estimate that they made in uh, March. Mm -hmm. um, we, we believe that their estimate is going to be off. Um, we want to know, uh, before we come back in on June 3rd, how off their estimate was. Um, the next time they come in officially will be in July, so we don't want to wait till July uh, for their July estimate. But we do want to get kind of a, a general feel for where they think uh, things are. Because in March, um, things were still fairly open. Things were still moving along um, when they met on March 12th, I think it was. Um, and things have drastically changed since they have met. And they, they estimated about an $80 million uh, change on March 12th. Yeah. They, they estimated 12, $80 million less revenue based on COVID-19. And I think that's going to be significantly more. We had 32, $32 million less revenue last month alone. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't envy you, uh, Representative Wills, uh, and the, everybody else in the legislature, the, the governor. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work in a short amount of time. And I know all of you are doing what you think is best uh, for Iowa. Despite uh, party affiliation, everybody's doing what they think is best, and uh, public service is a, a, a noble juncture. So uh, thank you for all that you've been doing during this time, and uh, appreciate you getting back down to Des Moines and representing us here in Northwest Iowa. And uh, you have a, a great weekend, John. 
Thank you, you too, and uh, thanks to your sponsors for uh, helping out with this and uh, making this available to the public. I thank you, and I thank those sponsors as well. Our guest has been State Representative John Wills, of course, the first legislative district right here in Iowa. We thank him for joining us. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast.